A puzzling object in the 1983 data. Is this a hypothetical Planet 9? Scientists are one step closer to answering one of the most intriguing questions about the solar system. Is there a planet lurking somewhere in the cold, dark corners of our system, in an orbit so elongated that it could take thousands or even tens of thousands of years to complete? A British astronomer found traces of a strange object in data collected nearly 40 years ago, but is it really the ninth planet? Researchers have yet to be certain of the existence of this hypothetical object. However, data collected decades ago shed new light on the matter and may be a clue that will lead scientists to the ninth planet. Astronomer Michael Rowan Robinson of Imperial College London, UK, analyzed data from the infrared astronomical satellite, IRIS, in 1983 and found something surprising. The paper describing the discovery is now available on the archive preprint server and has been accepted for publication in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. In the outer reaches of the solar system, far beyond the orbit of Neptune, there are objects that have rather peculiar orbits. A popular hypothesis is that these strange orbits are influenced by a hypothetical body called Planet 9. Rowan Robinson himself states in the article that he is unlikely to have discovered Planet 9. His analysis, however, can be used to model where the object might now be. This, in turn, will allow for a more targeted search to confirm or disprove the thesis of its existence. Given the poor quality of the IRIS data and the fact that the object was at the very edge of detection by this satellite, the probability that Planet 9 has been discovered is not overwhelming, said the scientist. However, given the great interest in the Planet 9 hypothesis, it would be worth checking whether an object with similar parameters, located in that region of the sky, could be a candidate for solving the mystery, argues the expert. Speculations about the existence of a hidden planet in the outer reaches of the solar system have been going on for years. The debate was heated by a discovery made in 2016. Astronomers Mike Brown and Constantine Batijan of Caltech have found that small objects in the Kuiper belt are circling in strange orbits, as if under the gravitational pull of something large. However, Finding such a hypothetical object is much more complicated than it might seem. If there, it could be several times the mass of the Earth and orbit somewhere between 400 to 800 astronomical units from the Sun. An astronomical unit, or O, is approximately 150 million kilometers. A distance that separates the Earth from the Sun. By comparison, Pluto is about 40 astronomical units from our star. So the hypothetical planet is very far away, cold, and probably doesn't reflect sunlight at all. In addition, the area in which it can be located is very extensive. Hence, the subject of Planet 9 is hotly debated in the scientific community. The IRIS satellite operated for 10 months from January 1983, surveying 96% of the sky in the far infrared. At this wavelength, small, cool objects like Planet 9 can be detected. For this reason, Rowan Robinson decided to reanalyze the data, looking for an object with parameters similar to the hypothetical planet. It turned out that out of about 250,000 points detected by the satellite, three may be candidates for the ninth planet. In June, July and September 1983, Iris picked up what appears to be an object moving across the sky. However, this is not a certainty. The area of the sky where the point appears is close to the plane of the galaxy and it is possible that it is only a disturbance caused by other cosmic objects. Rowan Robinson also notes that the successor to IRIS, the Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System, 
Pan Stars, in operation since 2008, has failed to find a suitable candidate for the ninth planet. However, if we assume that Iris found the first traces of Planet 9, we can estimate a few things. According to the data, it would have a mass three to five times that of the Earth, and its distance from the Sun would be about 225 astronomical units. The movement of the source across the sky gives scientists an idea of the object's potential orbit. All this data would make it possible to search for a planet in a specific place. Further research is needed to see if such an object is as predicted and could be responsible for the unusual orbits of dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt, says Rowan Robinson. The psychology of the selfie. Why do we take pictures of ourselves? Social media is bursting at the seams with selfies, commonly known as, selfies. Have you ever asked yourself, why? Exactly. Why are people so eager to immortalize their likenesses? If you're wondering, there's good news. Scientists have gone to great lengths to try and understand this phenomenon. The first, selfie, in the world was probably taken in 1893 by Robert Cornelius. However, capturing likenesses is as old as time. After all, the oldest rulers and members of the aristocracy used the services of respected painters so that their faces could go down in history. Today, we don't have to be rich or pose for hours for our image to be immortalized forever and we are very happy to take advantage of this state of affairs. Because research shows that the average person takes as many as 450 selfies a year. Self-portraits, mainly taken with smartphones, are therefore a huge part of all photos taken today. The popularity of selfies is also one of the modern threats to public health and safety. There are cases of accidents, including fatalities, caused by careless selfie taking in mountains, cliffs, bodies of water or similar places where caution should be a priority. However, you do not need to take photos in dangerous places to expose yourself to danger. Before we put something online, we must think about whether it's worth it. For example, a self-portrait background that is carelessly covered can reveal the place where we are currently staying, and even our home address. Oversharing, i.e. excessive sharing of information about yourself, applies not only to photos, but to all online activity. In the era of the internet, we must be careful what others know about us. Not everyone has good intentions. A good way to increase your protection is to using encryption tools, such as VPN online, to connect to the network. Keeping an eye on phone settings, e.g. disabling attaching location to photos, avoiding sharing personal information, place of work, identity of friends and co-workers. Being careful about the background of photos, as we mentioned, characteristic backgrounds can be enough to estimate someone's place of residence. Common sense. Not everything we do has to be public. What makes us so eager to immortalize ourselves? Is vanity so deeply rooted in human nature? It turns out that it's not about our self-love at all. While some people actually like to look at themselves, the mechanisms behind the popularity of selfies are different. A group of scientists decided to investigate why, although the technology of digital photography is relatively young, handheld photos have quickly and firmly taken root in our society. The study was published in April 2023 in the scientific journal Social Psychological and Personality Science. It shows that people who capture their likeness very often do so not because they like to look at themselves, but because this style of photography allows them to capture the deeper meaning of the moment, not just the physical experience associated with it. Take, for
For example, two hypothetical photos taken by a couple of friends during an exotic vacation by the ocean. One of them shows a beautiful landscape, a clean beach, blue water and palm trees leaning over it. On the other hand, smiling women are visible, and the beach is only the background of the photograph. The cited study shows that although people are happy to take both types of photos, the second one, presenting themselves, carries a deeper message. We often take selfies, not out of vanity, but to document the meaning of the moment, emotions and memories. In the above example, it could be about quality time spent with a friend, not just the fact of being at the beach. Researchers also believe that most of us have a kind of intuition that tells us what perspective to use to achieve the intended purpose of photography. If we want our commemorative photo to be meaningful and have a deeper meaning, most likely we will choose a third-person perspective of ourselves. If, on the other hand, the photo is to document the physical experience of being in a certain place or performing some activity. Most of us will focus on the first-person perspective, i.e. showing what we see as a photographer. For example, the landscape. So if you've ever wondered why modern people are so eager to take self-portraits, you've got your answer. Of course. It also happens that we care about self-promotion, acceptance of the environment and collecting likes. But research shows that it's usually all about capturing the important moment and yourself as part of it.